Oh man, it stings! Oh, hey guys, how you doing? Um, awkward. Today we are going to be talking about some mistakes that I have made when buying sports cards. Stick around. To all my sports card collector, investor, all my collectibles friends out there, how's everybody doing? Today we are going to sit here and talk a little bit about my misfortune. How about it? Now I think this is an important one. We, you know, we do a lot of sports cards 101 things to kind of look out for, and this is one where it's like, hey, things I learned along the way, um, and hopefully this helps one person out there as you all are kind of formulating your collecting slash investing game plan. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. We are literally, I think we're about 80 subscribers away from 13,000, guys. I could use your help. I just need 80 of you. So even if you're already a subscriber, if you could reach out to family, cousins, second cousins, just have them hit that subscribe button just to make me happy. I just want to get to that 13,000 number. It's been sitting there and we've been kind of dinking and dunking along and we're so close. So it would help me very much hit that subscribe button. If you like what you hear, the like button and of course, the tappity tap on the notification bell so that you are notified when new videos come out. All right, so I got back into the hobby the first quarter, the first part of 2018. And actually, my first buys were the most smart buys that I have had, maybe that I've ever had. And then from there on, it kind of dipped, it went down, and now I think I'm on like a fairly decent track. But basically, my first buys, I can, I can remember a few of them, some examples were Joe Montana rookie card, PSA 8 for $125, uh, Pete Maravich rookie card, PSA 6 for about $215, and a PSA 3 Jim Brown rookie card for about $225. And at the time, $200 was a lot for me to, to spend on a sports card because as I was looking at kind of, you know, price movements, I didn't see a lot of volatility, especially on some of that vintage stuff. The vintage stuff, it did go up, but it wasn't, there wasn't volatility in that market really. It was, you know, the prices were fairly similar over a long period of time. And so that's where for me, it was kind of like, what's the rush to buy a lot of this stuff? I, it didn't, it didn't, you know, I didn't get any sort of inkling that this could be like a big deal until I heard a big influencer named Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, you might have heard of him, start to talk about sports cards. And I saw what was happening in graded comic books and some of these other kind of pop culture collectible and sports cards have a long history, but it was starting to kind of like, there's things brewing. I could feel something kind of brewing and prices were starting to move up really as we got into 2018 through 18 and then we got into 2019, you were seeing some movement on those prices. Now what happened and where I've made some errors, and I'll, I'll talk about kind of what I learned at the end as well, is when things started to really kind of move up, once, once we get into like fall of 2019, we get into 2020, pandemic hits, and then we've got kind of that big boom, the Last Dance documentary is moving pricing around on Michael Jordan, bull stuff, basketball stuff. The first one is I bought second year cards, but on ultra modern stuff. So a guy that I like to collect is Devin Booker. I like his game, and it was before they ever went to the finals. I just thought he was a great player. I liked watching him play, um, and I've got a bunch of, you know, still have a lot of that stuff, second year, you know, prism and that stuff, which, look, and maybe over the long term, that stuff does okay, and I didn't break the bank spending money on it. Raw copies of those cards were $5, $10. When Mosaic came out in March 2020, or maybe it was May 2020, um, it was it was mega popular. Everybody wanted mosaic basketball. And so I got a lot of the like silver prisms, the mosaic silvers. I love the look of the cards. They're great. I bought a lot of raw copies. I've got Luka Doncic. I've got Devin Booker. I've got Kawhi Leonard, Steph Curry's. And I didn't spend huge money, but I stacked those at like, you know, 10, 15, $20 thinking like, man, that's a cool parallel. And it look at all the silver prisms and kind of what they're doing. And, you know, Again, trying to do too much. And where I think I might have overestimated is everything was kind of hot. And so what I was thinking is, is that, you know, the hobby is going to widen as far as, you know, the interest, the demand, and it's going to create extra interest in some of these second year, third year cars. Now, of course, if you've got maybe like, you know, patch auto second year or third year for, for big time star players, then that could be a different story. 
but I was looking more at not necessarily just like mosaic base cards. I mean, they at least were like silvers and, and different colored stuff, uh, cool stuff. But I just thought, you know, that would be stuff that would also kind of see, you know, the same sort of increases. And again, over time, maybe that stuff does. When we go back to 2015 to 2019 Prism, I think to that, well, 2018 Prism, I should say, once we get to 2019, 2020, you're starting to probably see print runs that are getting up there. Um, but anyway, I digress. I kind of overestimated the the hobby kind of widening out, where it's like the old rules don't apply. They won't apply anymore. You know, you don't just have to get rookie cards. And now, if we're talking about vintage cards, that holds true to where you can get a second year, third year, fifth year Willie Mays, you know, Mickey Mantle, uh, Bill Bill Russell, etc. But in modern, ultra modern, that has not carried over the way that I thought that it could have. Now, again, in the short term, in the long term, who knows? That's the thing that we just don't know yet. In the long run, maybe that'll change. And that takes me into my next point of too much short term thinking, not enough long term thinking. You know, when I talk on my channel, it's I'm collecting stuff that I think is cool. But also, the goal is not necessarily to 5x, 10x, 20x my money, but steady growth over time. And I think I was thinking too much in the short run as opposed to what could happen in the short run as opposed to long-term opportunities with maybe some short-term upside, you know, and that's where it was kind of like, you know, all the goat talk. Oh, just focus on, you know, the goats. Well, if you had focused on the goats in 2020 from, you know, January 2020 to when the, that first kind of big boom was, was March 2020, but the irony is, is that boom is small in comparison to what we saw in August 2020 and then February 2021. So I held off. I love Michael Jordan stuff, but I didn't buy Michael Jordan stuff because the last dance documentary, the prices were just moving upward. February, March, April, leading up to that documentary in April. And so I'm like, well, I don't want to just pay, like kind of, I don't want to chase. Well, ironically, those prices, even chasing at those prices, the last dance prices were, were a lot less than what they looked like in February, 2021. That's not, that's one example. It's one data point, et cetera. But it was just kind of funny how that, how that worked out. Now, I think also, what had happened with guys like Patrick Mahomes and Luka Doncic, you know, the skyrocketing prices for those, for those kind of upstart players, really kind of the, the exciting young players that are coming up in their perspective perspective leagues, you know, I think a lot of people is like, well, who's next? You know, okay, we've got Luca, we've got Pat Mahomes, you know, who are kind of the, the young NBA stars that could get some playing time or speculating. I did too much speculating. I speculated on newer players. I'm more of a football card guy. So I've got Mason Rudolph rookie cards, Will Greer rookie cards. I've got um, Ryan Finley rookie cards. I've got Josh Rosen. I bought five auto Josh Rosen cards for $100. And I'm thinking $20 each. Like, I can't really, like, what's my downside on that? Well, my downside is about $100. I mean, Josh Rosen stuff, I might be able to get a little bit for it. And who knows, you know, maybe some of these guys end up working out, you know, I mean, uh, Flip and Steve, one of my buddies, hobby friends, he has a story about Ryan Tannehill, where Ryan, he had a, a graded Ryan Tannehill card that he sold it off, I think when the Titans started doing good things. But anyway, that card just kind of moved way up from where it was. And so you never know. I mean, one of these guys, a couple of these guys, maybe they do work out in the league. But the point is, is I was looking too much, again, short-term thinking with prospects, you know, which prospect could pop off, you know, which one could have a big game, as opposed to really kind of taking a bigger, wider look at it, looking at scarcity. Now, the, the other, I guess, the thing is, I was taking scarcity into account because my Josh Rosen autos are numbered, you know, um, they are, there's some scarcity attached to it. It's just, I missed on the player, or at least I have so far on the player, unless Josh Rosen breaks out somewhere. But the point is, is, is that, you know, you kind of have to have the scarcity matching up with the player. And those are kind of really the big things that, that drive a lot of hobby pricing. Are they getting hobby love, as they would say, or are they all time great players? Are they expected to go to the Hall of Fame, et cetera, all those things. So there was some mistakes there where it was too much prospecting. Not enough. And then when I was buying like all time players like Steph Curry, I was buying second year or not second year. I actually, yeah, some second year, fifth year parallels of his, which I did okay on some of that stuff. Some of the graded ones I did okay. Um, but still it was kind of like, you know, just if I had just maybe focused more on the rookie cards at that time, they were still. 
fairly inexpensive back in late 19, uh, 2019 and early 2020, even even summer of 2020. A lot of the rookie cards for those guys were still fairly affordable. It was just really the last, you know, it was like that back half of 2020 going into Q1 of 2021. Everything went went really bonkers. And so what I've done is really tried to refocus my efforts. It's got to be something that I think is awesome, that I also like it long term. And the price point is so, so critical. The price point is everything. Is this a price point that I feel like I'm getting in on? Whether it's a prospect or a goat, the price point is absolutely critical. How am I getting in on it? Do I think that it realistically could go up over time? And does it also maybe have some short term potential? And if the answers are all yes to those things, then it's, you know, kind of bumped up the list of, of, of items. I'm looking harder at, you know, more scarce vintage stuff. And I'm also trying to, I'm contemplating too, you know, I've talked to a lot of, um, you know, more of the high end hobbyists that are my friends. And, you know, they've talked to me about like, Hey man, you know, maybe look at buying the $5,000 card instead of buying 10, $500 cards. And I think that that's interesting because, it's like I've got that diversi- the diversification in my brain of like, you know, diversify and go into, you know, just, just spread it out into smaller increments and you're, it's a little bit more safe. But then I think about, you know, war, the, the Warren Buffett quotes of like, why diversify when there's, you know, if there's five great companies, why am I going to put money into 50 companies where I know the five companies are great? And Warren Buffett's take on that is I'm putting all, I'm moving all my chips into the five companies I like as opposed to going the index with the 50. You know, assuming you know how to evaluate companies and all that, but it's kind of like, I guess the sports card equation to that would be, you know, if you know a player is an all time player or you know this card is an all time card, assuming you're not paying maybe a, you know, high end price point for something like that, if you can maybe catch it out on a downturn, then you know, might have something there. So I'm contemplating that. Should I be going kind of, you know, dinking and dunking with smaller things? And I'm also a collector too, to where I like having more cards, you know, so I like being able to have, you know, more, maybe smaller cards but that I can enjoy over some of the bigger stuff that maybe has more of a, a, a potential to grow in value over time. It's a struggle. Guys, let me know what, what your plans are. Have you made any mistakes yourself? Um, and what do you, what did you take away from it? How are you collecting slash investing nowadays? Let me know. Talk to me. All right, guys, stay healthy, stay awesome. And I will talk to you again later.